rather unfortunate that for Africa, where women are drivers of economies, they receive the least support from the institutionalized or formalized um, financing. The fact that women in many communities can't own collateral is in itself an impediment to accessing, among others, debt. Um, and then after that, you'll find, so what happens with that, even when they have an innovative idea, because they are, the environment doesn't allow them to own that. So even when they do register a business, it's registered under the husband's name. As I have observed, uh, structural failures or a misogynistic society, if I can just be blunt. Um, and from our private capital perspective, the structure is actually, it goes all the way to the top. So we raise money from LPs to deploy into our portfolio companies. At LP level, we don't have enough women in finance sitting around the decision-making table of who, which GP to allocate capital to. So if you have a team of men in the investment committee making a decision on which fund to, to give money to, they'll likely fund a fellow man, right? And so, and I have statistics where in Africa, there's less than 1% of women who are raising funds. It takes long to fundraise, um, and some of us are not risk averse to that extent, but increasingly, it's just the hurdles you have to jump um, as a woman in accessing capital to convince a male um, committee. So, there are, so that's a structural thing. There's also the types of businesses we do are not the cool businesses to invest. And there are cool businesses to invest in, we have found. So tech is increasingly getting a lot more capital. It's easier to fundraise for tech from a VC perspective. Um, renewable energy, no offense, <laughs> is another sector. And often these are not sectors that will have a lot of women uh, acting there.